Hey guys and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to create multiple plots inside matplotlib. Now, up till now, you guys have just been creating one graph, one plot per window, right? But in this video, I'll teach you guys how to create more than just one on the same window. Okay, so like two, three, four, or as many as you want plots on the same window. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. We just need to use the same function that we've been using up till now, plt.subplots, okay? The only difference is that we're gonna be using some extra parameters this time, okay? This is how we normally do it, okay? And if I run this, we'll get a single plot here, okay? Now let's explore how to create more than just one. There are actually two parameters that we can pass into this function. One of them is the number of rows and the number of columns. Okay, these are the two parameters. So if I pass in two by two here, guess what happens? We get four, okay, in a two by two grid. And that is so easy. That's all we had to do. We just had to pass in two parameters and suddenly we get four graphs. We can do two by one and we'll get two graphs, okay, two rows and one column. We can do one by two and we can get one uh one one row yeah one row and two columns okay and similarly we can do three by three but then this gets a bit, a bit big so then you need to maybe adjust the fig size a bit if you don't want to keep doing it manually like maybe nine by nine all right that looks good but it's a big it's a bit big it's going going out of the window the recording window a bit so let's just not do that much okay so i'll just remove that and tone this down a bit back to two by two okay and now we need to kind of address another problem now this axis object here it no longer represents just one axis object right that's not that's not possible if i do axis dot plot which axis object are we really plotting on you might wonder right well actually this is a 2d array now Whenever we pass in, you know, whenever we create more than one plot, this becomes a 2D array. So instead of doing axis.plot, we're going to do something like axis, uh, you know. So here we have our way of accessing this 2D array, indexing the 2D array, and then we call the function, the plot function, on that axis object. Okay, and yeah. What we could also do is something like this, access one is equal to this, and then we could later on do access one dot plot, but that's up to you. That's just extra code, but if it helps you understand it better, then sure. Let me just go ahead and plot a bunch of values, okay? All right, and let's run this code. And there we go. We basically accessed the zeroth row Okay, which is the first row and the first column, sorry, the second column. Okay, and that's, you know, this one. Okay, so if I change this to zero, zero, guess which one is gonna have our plot? Yeah, exactly. And if I change this to one, zero, the first row, sorry, second row, first column. Okay, the first index row and the zero with index column. All right, and yeah, and one, one will be the last one. Okay, now obviously we, we can plot on all of them at the same time just by changing these. Okay, but it's just the same graph. Okay, cool. Now this is pretty handy, right? Now what do we need to take this to the next level? There's actually something interesting that we can do. For example, in what kind of situation would you even be doing something like this? Maybe when you're plotting similar data, like housing prices or stock prices or something like that or maybe you're measuring the temperature across the years for four cities or four different cities and you're measuring the temperature for them right so in such situations a certain question comes to mind could i maybe share the axis between both of them okay because if you don't share the axis then the two plots could look a bit different and comparing them could be a bit hard now that's this is a bit hard to explain but you'll understand once I show you how we can make the axis shared. If we do share x is equal to row, then this means that the x-axis will be shared between the same row. 
Okay, so if there are like three subplots in the same row, all of them will have the same x-axis. Okay, if we do column, then all the x all the subplots within the same column will have the same x-axis. Okay, and if we do all, then all of the subplots within the entire window will have the same x-axis. Okay, so we can also change this to like share y and do the same thing: column, row, and all. Okay. And yeah, but what's the point of doing this, right? You may wonder that. And that's a valid question. So to explain that, let me just remove this first. And then I'm going to change the data here a bit. Change the values, okay? I added two over there, removed two over here. And I'm gonna run our code now and we'll see what happens by, you know, when we're not sharing the x-axis or the y-axis, okay? And here we go, okay? Do you notice anything odd, maybe? Well, let me tell you this. Normally, when we plot this data, there's similar data, right? Like temperature. Okay, now let's say that this is the temperature for country A, and this is the temperature for country B. Okay, and you, you know what? To make that even easier for us to visualize, what I'll do is actually set the titles. Okay, and you can actually do that. Title.setText, and you can say city A. And do the same thing for this one and set the title to city B. Okay, now look over here. Both of them look the same, right? They both look roughly the same visually. But then you look at the y axis and you notice that they're drastically different. The y axis for city A is roughly twice as, you know, large as city B. Now that is a problem. They both visually look similar, but their y-axis tells a different story. So what if you want to resolve this problem? So what we could do is just share the y-axis between rows. And now this problem has completely been resolved. For the same reason, you might want to share the x-axis as well. So we can go ahead and do that. Okay. And again, all of this, whether or whether or not you do this, depends on your data set, depends on what kind of data you're comparing, okay? So you may want to do this, you may not want to do this, it depends on your data set. I was just trying to show you that you could do it, okay? So yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. And yeah, if there's any more interesting content you want to see in the future, then do subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and hopefully I'll get to see you guys in a later video. Bye then.